Well, good morning, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Kids Church Online with me, Marcus. I hope that you've had a really good week off school on half term and you're having lots of fun with your families. And today we are in week seven of our series on the fruits of the Holy Spirit. For a change, I thought we'd start with a few jokes. Why did the orange stop? I don't know. Why did the orange stop? Because it ran out of juice. <laughs> How do you fix a cracked pumpkin? I don't know. How do you fix a cracked pumpkin? With a pumpkin patch. <laughs> what do you call a group of strawberries playing the guitar? A jam session! <laughs> In today's session, birthday shout outs, worship, Bible story and talk, family craft, memory verse, more from Micah, and lots more besides. Let's get ready to worship! Shine from the inside out. Then the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out. Then the world will see you live in me. You know me and you love me and you feel me. So send me to shine from the inside out. Then the world will see you live in me. Shine.
you can feel my heart Take my name off in two with a brand new sound November the 10th. Happy birthday to Caroline who's 60 on November the 12th. And happy birthday to Isaac who's going to be 20 on November the 22nd. Wishing all of you guys an amazing year ahead and a very happy birthday. Ho -ho! The fruit of the spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Faithfulness. In a world where fair-weather friends are everywhere. Hey, that's a cool hat. One of my friends? That was lame. We're not friends anymore. And gossipers betray the trust of others. I have a fear of toast. Please don't tell anyone. Your secret is safe with me. Gabe is afraid of toast. What a nerd! Betray! From the creator of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, comes a tale of three friends. Friendship! 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 Who thought nothing could come between them. The Captain Karate Dino Cop 3D movie is coming out. We have to go see it. We'll see it together. together. But when one of them forgot to do their homework... I forgot to do my homework. I can't go see the movie. But we had this plan for months. Ugh, we bought the tickets already. Their friendship was put to the test. Our friendship is being put to the test. Hey, I just said that. This wouldn't have happened if you didn't sleep through math class. I can't help it. Math is so boring. A decision would have to be made. A decision has to be made. Come on, guys. Get your own lines. Sorry. We can't just leave him like this. You know how he is with math. 4 plus 12 equals... With time running out. 20 minutes until the movie. We don't have much time. Go on without me. I'm not going to make it. Would they abandon their friend? Or would they show? Let's do this. Faithfulness. 1 Peter 4.10 says... God's gifts of grace come in many forms. Each of you has received a gift in order to serve others. You should use it faithfully. What? Our Bible story today comes from the book of Ruth. God's story, Ruth. So part of God's story is about a woman named Ruth, and it begins like this. Ruth lived in a place called Moab and was married to a guy who was part of God's special family, the Israelites. A few years later though, Ruth's husband died. Instead of returning to her family, which would have been expected, she stayed with Naomi, her husband's mom. Naomi tried to get Ruth to go back to her family in Moab, but Ruth wouldn't leave Naomi, no matter what. In fact, she wanted to go back to Israel with her. Ruth said, Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So they both returned to Naomi's home in Bethlehem. Back then, though, it was hard for women to find work. Usually, they had to be taken care of by their husband or a dad. It's really hard to imagine that now, but Naomi and Ruth might not have even known how they'd survive. At first, to get food, Ruth went to the fields of a man named Boaz and followed his harvesters around. If they dropped anything, even just a piece of grain, she picked it up. This was called gleaning. Ruth worked from morning to night and barely even took a break. Boaz noticed. He told his workers to leave behind some extra grain for her to gather. When Naomi heard about this, she was overjoyed because Boaz was Naomi's relative and what's called a family redeemer. 
that meant that it was his responsibility to take care of his family. If anybody was going to rescue Ruth and Naomi, it was Boaz. Kids, we have a Redeemer too. It's Jesus. He's the one who saves us. Anyway, this gave Naomi an idea. She told Ruth to put on her best clothes and perfume and then go to the place where Boaz was sleeping. Naomi said that once Boaz had gone to sleep, Ruth should lay down by his feet. Now, this may sound like a weird plan, but it was actually really brave. Ruth trusted Naomi and obeyed. When Boaz woke up, he was surprised. After all, someone was lying at his feet. That's not exactly a normal night. When Boaz asked who Ruth was, she said, I am your servant. You are my family redeemer. Now Boaz understood. Ruth wanted Boaz to marry her so that she and Naomi would both be taken care of. Boaz agreed. This was a huge deal. Ruth wasn't an Israelite, but she wanted to follow God anyway. By marrying Boaz, she got to officially be part of God's family. In fact, Ruth's great-grandson was King David, and many, many years later, Jesus, the rescuer, was born into the same family line. Now, because of Jesus, we get to be a part of God's family too. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Ruth was from Moab. Her husband died. Ruth was left with his mom, Naomi. Naomi told her to go home. Ruth said no. She went to Israel with Naomi. They needed someone to take care of them. Ruth gleaned in a field. Boaz noticed. He left extra grain for Ruth. Naomi made a plan. Ruth obeyed it. She wanted to marry Boaz. He agreed. Ruth became part of God's special family. And we can too. And that's a part of God's story. At the start of our story, everything seems to have gone wrong. Ruth and Orpah have lost their husbands, and Naomi has lost both her sons. It seems it couldn't get any worse. But over the course of the story, people's choices to do the right thing and stick together turn everything around. First of all, we've got Ruth's choice to stick with Naomi and be faithful to her. Secondly, we've got Naomi's choice to accept Ruth's help. And thirdly, we've got Boaz's choice to do the right thing and to agree to marry Ruth, to rescue the family. And what does God do in the story? Well, he rewards Ruth for sticking with Naomi by replacing everything that Ruth had lost, by giving her a brand new husband in Boaz, and by giving Ruth and Boaz the gift of a child, and finally, by looking after Naomi through her new family. And by the end of the story, Ruth, Boaz and Naomi are all in so much of a better place than they were at the start. And it's all because of Ruth's choice to stick together and be faithful to Naomi and because of God's goodness. Even more amazingly, Ruth wasn't one of God's special chosen people, but she gets the honour of getting to join in with God's incredible promise to Abraham. The promise to do good to the whole world with a master plan to beat evil, darkness and death once and for all and to make a way for everybody to be forgiven and to know God as their best friend forever. You see, God's amazing rescue plan for the whole world had always been designed to be carried out by God working together with his chosen people through a family their children carry on being part of the plan and their children's children and their children's children's children until the time was right for God to send his special rescuer. God himself being born as a human being, someone who would do everything that was needed to complete the rescue mission. Ruth's great grandson ended up being King David, the best king that God's people had ever had. And if you haven't already guessed it, Jesus, God's own son, fully man, fully God, our rescuer, is a distant member of Ruth's family. 
So her choice to stick together with Naomi no matter what allowed God to work out the most amazing thing for the whole world. I bet Ruth would never have guessed what God would do through her sticking with Naomi. I wonder what she would have said if she'd known. Mind blown! Being someone who is faithful is part of what it means for us to be God's friends. God's friends are called to live in a completely different way to people who don't yet know him, who we know. See, we live in a world that tells us, do whatever makes you happy, do what's best for you, don't worry about other people. But God's friends, that's me and you, are called to be his mirrors, to reflect him to the people around us, to show them what he is like. To live the way that God wants will show everybody around us what he's like. And we can only do that by God living in us, giving us his incredible power to live differently. But if you are his friend, the moment you said yes to him, he gave you his Holy Spirit. So living differently and being faithful in a world that is often not faithful and doesn't stick together with people is possible. God invites you and me to change the world so that the world becomes the way that he always planned and wanted it to be. One person at a time being changed by God's friends teaming up with him to share his love and his goodness with everyone. Two things that God has promised us his friends. One, he will never ever leave us. And two, nothing can or ever will be able to stop his love from reaching us. So what's our bit to do in all this? Well, God calls us to be people who stick with him and the people we know in the same way that he sticks with us. So not to walk away when things get hard, when we feel hurt, let down or disappointed. To stick together no matter what, through the ups, through the downs, through the good and the bad times. To keep going with him and to be the kind of friend to others that Jesus is to us. And what will happen when we do that? Well, I think three things. Firstly, people will catch sight of what God is like, what Jesus is like, what Holy Spirit's like. Number two, Jesus will begin to change their lives as they see us sticking with them, no matter what, and being faithful. And number three, Jesus will then go on to use those same people to change the lives of other people they know by being faithful themselves. So, today and in the weeks to come, let's choose to be people who stick with Jesus, who stick with our families, and who stick with our friends no matter what. Then, let's get excited about what Jesus will do as we choose to be faithful and stick with him and others, just like Ruth. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the amazing story of Ruth and what you did through her choice to be faithful and to stick with Naomi. Fill us now with more of your Holy Spirit so that we can be people who stick with you, with our families and with the people that we know are friends, no matter what. Use us to change the lives of people we know so that they find out that you are the most faithful friend that they'll ever know. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's memory verse comes from the book of Proverbs, a book that was written by King David's son Solomon. 
and it is Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. It says, Every word of God can be trusted. He protects those who come to him for safety. Every word of God can be trusted. He protects those who come to him for safety. still time to get involved with Operation Christmas Child. Donations need to be in by the second week of November. Let's watch this video again to see how our giving can really change and transform the lives of children in other parts of the world. At the count of three, when children open the shoe boxes, they're so excited. I mean, this has just been incredible. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name, and that's what this is all about. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. God will bless and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. Well, that's it for our session today. I hope it's inspired and encouraged you. Well, God bless you. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you again next Sunday from 8 a.m. for another session on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Goodbye! God keeps his promises, he does not lie. Go ahead, be confident, don't be shy. You can talk to him anywhere. You can call on him anytime. God keeps his promises.
promises he does not lie Go ahead, be confident, don't be shy You can talk to him anywhere You can call on him anytime Don't put faith in the wrong stuff Faith in God brings peace and trust He does not lie Go ahead, be confident Don't be shy You can talk to him anywhere You can call on him anytime God keeps his promises He does not lie Go ahead, be confident Don't be shy You can talk to him anywhere You can call on him anytime Don't put faith in the wrong stuff